Well, um, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for coming along to watch my demonstration this morning. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, groundwork, and, and, and we're going to talk about groundwork in relation to confidence when you ride. Um, I'm a big believer that if you can get everything happening on the ground, and you can get a good relationship with your horse on the ground, it means when you actually get on his back, you're going to be a lot safer. Um, my name is Michelle O'Neill from Cherry Tree Equine and I run clinics, horsemanship clinics, clinics on the trail um, all over the country and I see so many horses come to those clinics whose groundwork is just not established and you know I was young and stupid once and thought groundwork wasn't really that essential and for any of you who are around my age, which I'm not going to tell you, um, you kind of get that the more, the older we get or the le more you lose your confidence and, and for you, some people that's as a young person, um, you know, the more, the more you get to that stage, the more you realise that, you know, when you swing your leg over this 600 kilo animal, you're exposing yourself to the elements a little bit. So you want to know, and I want to know, when I put my, my leg over this horse, I want to know that I'm going to be safe and I want to know that this horse is going to look after me. And I established that uh, with groundwork. Um, I bred this horse. He started, what you're going to see today is just some of the groundwork that we do with our horses. Um, he started that as a weanling. Uh, and every so often when required, I will give him a little brush up and we'll do a little bit of groundwork. But this horse is now five years old. He doesn't do groundwork every day. So when I'm showing you all this stuff, I don't want you to think that I'm telling you for the rest of your life, you're gonna be unable to ride your horse. What I'm showing you is the things that I put down as my foundation so that when I do ride these horses, I know I'm safe. And the end of the day in my business, not all my horses stay with me. And when I sell those horses on, I need to make sure all you guys are safe. We don't have many that we sell, but the odd one we do, the last thing I want to get is that phone call that says, the horse you sold me is no good, okay? So uh, my big thing is from the, from the get-go, from as soon as I start handling them as weanlings, they need to start be, to be understanding how things are gonna work and we need to be starting to build a relationship that means that I'm going to be safe when I eventually get on their back. Um, and something that people tend to forget about groundwork is we talk about groundwork and people think you get out in a 60 foot round yard and you start doing groundwork. Groundwork starts from the minute you walk into the paddock or into the yard or into the stable to catch your horse. Groundwork is how your horse greets you when you walk into the yard. Groundwork is how your horse stands when you brush him. You guys have probably noticed I've been sending this horse away from me. He's been over in the stalls, he's come over here, there's tractor pulls, there's great big puffing diesel monsters behind him. I don't want him in my space, okay? I don't want him standing on top of me. So straight away, even while I'm talking to all of you, I am making sure that he understands that I will look after him, but he doesn't have to do it standing on top of me. I'm absolutely massive on personal space, okay? This is my area, as a general rule. This horse has no right to be within my personal space. This horse has no need to be any closer than this to me. Now I've got him a lot further than that away, just to show the point, okay? But I see so many horses, and, and I turn up at clinics these days, and, and the first part of my clinics is a groundwork session. And, and from the instant I turn up, I'm watching what goes on, and I'm looking at horses, and looking at people, and assessing relationships. And I see so many horses, he wants to step backwards because I've been reinforcing that. I see so many people and they're standing there and this horse, just, just be bad for a minute please. This, the horse is standing on top of them. The horse is here, the horse is in here. I've a bit, I've long hair. I've a bit of a saying with people, your horse is not a hair ornament. He has no need to be standing chewing on my ponytail, okay? That's mine, not his. So if your horse is starting to do that, straight away what your horse is saying is that I can do what I like. Your horse is saying, and they don't mean it maliciously, I don't want you to think I'm saying horses are nasty. Okay, horses are not nasty. 
but horses will react to the situations that they're within and they'll react to the people who are with them. So if your horse straight away thinks that it is okay to be pushing you out of the road, you have a relationship problem, okay? You have a foundation problem. What happens is, of course, as soon as those horses get in people's space, and if I'm standing here trying to talk to all of you and he's walked up in here and I can't see you guys, the first thing most people do is step backwards. Now, think about your horses at home. Think about the order that your herd lives in at home. You will have the alpha horse, who is the one who at feed time pushes everybody else out of the road to get their dinner. Okay? You all can picture that horse in your mind. I will guarantee you, if the second horse in the order goes and takes, tries to take that alpha horse's feed, what's going to happen? The alpha horse is going to get, go get out of my space and the sub-alpha horse is going to move away. So, what do you think you're telling your horse if every time you go near it, he pushes into you and you have to step away. Who do you think, think who do you think is now running this relationship? It's your horse. Now we're talking about confidence and how groundwork relates to how you, what happens when you get to put horses under saddle. If that's already happening, think about what happens when you then sit on that horse's back. Already you have established a relationship whereby that horse does not respect your position in the in the herd, for want of a better word. Okay, I'm not going to tell you guys to think like horses because you're not horses. But I'm going to tell you to think in a way that will make your relationship with a horse better. So, if from the get-go your horse is walking over you, you already have a problem. Okay, now. I don't mean, I don't mean I want this horse cowering on the end of that lead rope in terror, okay? That's not what I want. I just want him to respect my position. You guys who've got kids, now, I know this is hard, especially if you've got teenagers. Think about your kids. Who's the boss? Okay? <laughs> not you, Mitchell. Okay? It's a, if you treat, and I've got a friend who's a very successful trainer, and he always says the, the relationship between your children and your horses isn't that much different. And I can tell you an interesting observation I've noticed over the years, and I'm not a psychologist, but quite often if people have children who are running the show, quite often they have horses who are running the show. So it's think about how you interact with other people. Think about how you interact with your family. Okay? So, you can see, it's not killing this horse to stand here on the end of the rope. Okay? He's, the, the big tractor's puffing away up behind him. This horse and I have a relationship whereby he knows I'm not going to hurt him. So therefore, he's okay with his own personal space. Okay? And you think about, you know, if I walked up to you, if you come visit me at the stand after you this demo, and I walk up to you and I'm in your space like this, how am I going to make you feel? Okay, I'm the same with him. So, a little game I like to play with my horses is I like to make sure that they understand the difference in when I'm asking them to come to me and do something or move their feet, and when I'm just asking them to do nothing. Now. This horse, I can guarantee you, if he had his way on Friday morning, I wouldn't have loaded him in the truck. He'd be standing under a tree at home doing nothing this afternoon. That's not an option for him. He's got to earn his keep. His second most favourite thing he could possibly do right here now is exactly what he's doing. They don't want to move. Horses are concerned by food and shelter and safety. So, he's not hungry, tell by the look of him. So, he's quite happy there now to do nothing, okay? That is the best I can offer him at the moment as a reward. So, he's not doing anything wrong, I'm gonna let him do it. But, if I then wanna work with him and I want him to move, I'm gonna work on my body language. Now, for any of you who are working with your horses, anytime you have a problem with your horse, whether it's groundwork or ridden work, the first thing I want you to do is go back and think about what messages you're giving your horse. 
What are you doing with your body language? And I'll give you this. I'll give you an example. So, I don't want him to move. Look at my body language. Now he's looking at me. He's focused on me. He's calm. I can walk up and give him a pat. But I'm actually not asking him to do anything because my body language is relaxed and calm. My eyes are lowered, my focus is soft, my shoulders are slumped, I'm walking in a very relaxed manner. Now, if I change that and I want this horse to step toward me, I change my body language. So I stand up to him and I then give a little pull on the rope. All I am doing this horse with this horse at the moment is asking him to give to pressure. If I give a little pull on the rope and he steps forward, I release instantly. That's his reward. He gave to pressure. I can ask him to come further. There's no problem with that. Okay? But when I stop, he stops because he's focused on what I'm doing. If I ask him to go backwards. No, my body language elevates in energy. My shoulders go back, my eyes come up, and I walk toward him. Now, you watch when I drop my body language and I walk toward him. He doesn't move his feet. Body language is so important with everything you do with your horses. And like I said, remembering that groundwork starts from the instant you catch them in the yard. So, if you've had a bad day at work, or a bad day at school, and you walk in the yard and you're in a filthy, dirty mood and you go to catch your horse and he spins around and takes off, think about what you have just told your horse to do. You have told your horse that you are aggressive, you are a threat, so get out of my way. These are prey animals. They have evolved. They have evolved over centuries running from lions and tigers and man. Remembering we used to eat these things when we lived in caves. And that's still hardwired in them somewhere. For all of what we've done with domestication and all the rest, they still have that element within them that means they have to look after themselves and they're about preservation. So, think about what you're doing. Now, he's focused on me, his ears are forward. If he doesn't step, I'm just going to keep the pressure until he does. Now, the big thing when you're training your horses is your release. So when I pull and I release, remembering the release is his reward. You will never wreck a horse under saddle or on the ground by pulling on him. He might do that. I'll pull on him. I might do that. What went wrong there? What did I do wrong? I pulled too hard. But where was I focused? I was looking at all of you. He just went, why the, did you do that to me? Because at no stage did I give him warning that I was gonna ask him to step toward me. Look at the difference. Okay? You see what I've been talking about? You see how I'm trying to show you that little tiny things make a big difference. So, as I was saying, pulling doesn't damage a horse. Him doing that, I haven't wrecked him. I've made a mistake, but that's okay. We all make mistakes. And, and in your horse training, in my horse training, I can tell you I've made plenty. Okay, I'll be the first one to admit that I've done things wrong and things haven't always worked out. But then how am I gonna fix it? So I did something wrong. I looked at all of you and asked him to move and so he went, I can't hope with that. So I'm gonna work on it by making sure I do it correctly. That's not natural for a horse. That gives you an idea how much attention he's paying to where I'm asking him to put his feet. Okay, I will guarantee you he won't step off that until I tell him. <laughs> you look pretty. So now I'll ask him to step, that's gotta be uncomfortable. Okay, so if you make a mistake, don't think you've ruined your horse forever and don't think that you have now got a problem that you can't fix. Go back and just do it correctly. Fix the problem. Remembering we're trying to build our confidence with these horses and we're trying to build their confidence in us. So, if we do it wrong, just fix it. I didn't wreck the horse by pulling on him. I would have wrecked it if I hadn't have done it correctly. Now the next thing that I love all of my horses to be able to do is to flex. 
and I like them to be soft and supple. This is the, again, this is just giving to pressure. Now this is the first thing I do, okay, I'm getting to it. This is the first thing I do when I get on them, okay? When I swing my leg over a horse, and if you come back and watch me do my ridden demos this afternoon, the first thing you'll see me do is start to flex them. So I teach them this on the ground. Everything I do under the saddle, they learn on, on the ground before I start. Now, I was interesting to, listening to Jen's demo this morning, and she was doing it a similar kind of stretch as an actual uh, massage technique to help the horses be soft and limber. And she was saying you want the horses to hold this for 15 to 20 seconds to actually be effective, and that kind of works. I like that. I want him to stay there because he's stretching his neck. Now note, he says, I've done it three times. What more do you want? I'll come this way. Note, when he does this stretch, and it is a little different to Jen's stretch, but his face is straight up and down. If any of you are doing this stuff, oh, I know, come here, man. If any of you are doing this stuff and your horse's head is tipped like that and his nose is going like that, that's not correct, okay? You might be asking your horse to go further than what he's physically able to do at that stage. So that's kind of cool. His face is straight up and down. And what he's doing is what I want. I want him to stay here. So if I ask him to straighten up, and this is what you guys will do at home. Note, I'm standing in the girth area. I put my hand over their wither, over their back. That gives you a reference point. And if they walk off, you can just travel with them. So what I will do, I will ask him to give. Now when he gives and he's soft, and I'm doing this a little slower than I would normally just to show you. When he gives and he's soft, my hand is headed back here towards his shoulder. When he gives and he's soft, I will drop the rope. Now the dropping of the rope is more for you than the horse. Because if there's a, one of the major problems I come across people, in people, when they're handling horses, and I'm sorry girls, but we're the worst for it is that we have this urge to help them all the time. We don't want to turn them loose and dare them to make a mistake. We like to hang on to the reins. Um, so this is the start of you being confident enough to dare them to make the mistake. I've got a mate who says, if you put a horse in a bind and let him, let him figure it out for himself, he will never forget the lesson. If you help him for the rest of your life, He's, it's never gonna stick. So it's a bit like with your kids. If you never let your kid fall off that pony and break its arm, if you never let that kid fall off its scooter, like, you can't stop that stuff. Kids are gonna ride ponies and ride scooters and they're gonna fall off. It's part of life. I'm not saying that we're doing stuff with horses that's gonna get you hurt. But you can't baby them forever, and you can't baby your horses forever. If you want them to be really good partners. So, asking your horse to flex, drop the rope. You will work toward where you can do this. Where you can actually move, and he has moved his head. You can actually move and he stays there. If he straightens up, right thing easy, wrong thing difficult. The right thing is for him to stay just there and not go anywhere. If he doesn't do that, I'm just going to pick him up and remind him. That, that's it. That's all I have to do. Reach forward. He stretches away. Reach forward. That's better. Now I'll step away. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for him just to hang and to wait on me. Um, <sighs> I, um, I'm not big on gadgets. I'm not big on, on uh, equipment to, to, make, to make your life easier. But I'm a big fan of these. Okay, I can get more done with one of these sticks on the ground than any, apart from the halter, than any other tool I use. 
Okay? And you can use them in a thousand different ways. You can put a plastic bag on the end and desensitise horses to a plastic bag. You can put the string on the end and desensitise them to the stick. You can take the string off and, and teach your horse to lunge. Okay? Um, I am huge on desensitising my horses to stuff. In my competition life, my horses have to be able to cope with all sorts of things going on around them. So I want to make sure that I desensitise them to as many things as I possibly can. Now I will do this with the rope as well, but I was doing that yesterday, so I'll use the stick today. You guys can see I'm just flicking this horse over with the, the stick and the string. Note my body language. I'm calm, I'm relaxed, I'm not aggressive. If he walks off at this moment, I'm just going to keep doing this until he stops. Remembering, right thing easy, wrong thing difficult. He's doing a, he's a little bit like uh, about this today. He's kind of wanting to stiffen up. If I was at home working on this, his head's come up. If I was at home working on this, I would keep doing this until I saw one of the five signs of release. And your five signs of release are your key that your horse is accepting and is happy about what you do. Jen looks for the signs of release when she's massaging horses. It's all the same thing. So, I would just keep flipping me over with the stick until he actually started to relax. Now, because we're a bit short on time today, I probably won't be able to do that, but you get the idea. So we have desensitized him to the stick and string. Now I'm going to sensitize him a little bit. I'm going to actually like, well, I'm going to actually expose him to something that's a little scary to a horse. Now, what I want him to do is to stay put. I don't want him to move. I don't want him to throw his head up. I don't want him to do anything other than just keep four feet on the ground. If you've never done this with your horse before, you might start out here, as far away from your horse as you possibly can. And note, I'm not staring at the horse and being aggressive. I'm kind of looking at you. I'm rocked up back on my hip. Everything's calm. As you get doing more and more of this, what you'll do over time, and this is obviously the abbreviated version of how you do it, you will get closer and you will start to use the stick on the ground even harder. Now, you can see his head's come up a little bit. He's a little uh, sure about this today, so his head's come a bit. That's a little bit of a sign that he's not that impressed about this, okay? But there's my, even though I've stopped because I'm talking to all of you, talking about signs of release, there we go. We had a head lower, he shook his head, and he licked and chewed, okay? So, you will get to where you can get this stick and string going really fast, really close and really hard next to him. Now, of course, the thing is, a horse has two sides to his brain. So do we. There's one major difference, though. The human brain, the two halves of the human brain, are very well connected. So, if something happens to you on this side, instantly you understand when the same thing happens on the other side of your body. Unfortunately for our equine friends, the connective tissue between the two halves of the brain is not particularly strong. That's why you've all been taught, whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other. It's why, we're, it's one of the reasons why we're taught that. Because we have to make sure our horse understands things on both sides. I was talking to my farrier the other day and he was saying he knows if, he, if he's going to have a, trouble with a horse's foot, it's going to be the offside hind. Because people do all their stuff on the near side and they forget about the offside. They don't do anywhere near as much stuff on the offside. So he said if he's going to have a, a horse play up with one foot, nine times out of ten, that's the foot it's going to be. Having spent a long time working with other people's horses, I agree with him. Okay. So what that tells me is people are not doing enough stuff on both sides. So I've made sure he's pretty happy with his stick and string on this side. So now I'm going to start going from one side to the other. Now this is going to, there's an increase in energy and note I'm now looking straight at him and to achieve this swing I actually have to stand up a little bit. 
you guys can see he's had a change in his body language and now he's breathing and it's not happy breath. Okay, so I would keep going with this until he showed me a sign of relaxation. Now with him, it might just be that he's gonna lower his head a little bit. Okay, it might just be that he's gonna give me a breath. It might be a change in his facial expression. There you go. That's when you stop. Now, you guys probably didn't hear it, but he did the lick and the chew, but he took a big breath as well, okay? So that's when I can stop. Now, the key is, of course, I've just increased my energy with that stick and string, so now I need to do a little of this to make sure that he understands that this is not all about high energy, okay? This is nothing to be concerned about. This is just another tool that we use. Um, something I didn't talk about in relation to doing this, if you can get it to where you can flick these things all the way around their legs, it makes life a little bit easier if your horse ever gets caught up in things like wire. I actually rode this as a three-year-old. I rode this horse into a big heap of old hinge joint. I didn't see it, I was in the bush. And um, he just stood, didn't move. Well, I very quickly got off. Um, and you know, if this horse hadn't have had so many ropes and things around his leg, I'm quite sure it would have been a really different story. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to um, being confident, there's nothing better than being confident when you ride into wire. So, I'll just, uh, talking about confidence, I'll just briefly touch on, on lunging. Um, and, and this is, there's a few steps involved in getting to this that we go through at clinics. I will just show you a little bit here now. When I talk about lunging, I don't mean put the horse on a 40 foot rope and let him trot circles while I stand in the middle and pass the rope around me. That really doesn't achieve anything as far as I'm concerned. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to make the sucker fit by making him trot around here. I want to teach him something. So, you guys can see this horse is trotting along. He's got a nice rhythm about him. And he's bent to the inside of the circle. So what I mean by that is from his ears to his tail, his spine is basically following the shape of the circle. He hasn't got his head stuck out there looking at you. If you're ground working a horse and they're getting around and their head's stuck to the outside of the circle, one, I will tell you your horse isn't paying attention to you, and two, I will tell you you're increasing your chances of getting kicked pretty fast. I have had horses at clinics where people were not, well, a person was not lunging a horse correctly and the horse straightened up, stuck its head out, ran into the circle and went past and kicked her as she went by. And that was all because the horse was not shaped in its direction of travel. And here's the thing, when I ride this horse, I want him shaped in his direction of travel when I sit on his back. So I'm only reinforcing what's gonna happen when I get on him now. So, first thing I look for is a disengage. That was terrible. We'll do that again, thanks. Um, first thing on my horse, now I've practiced disengaging when I'm working horses, ground working, I've practiced disengaging as a separate exercise before I get to this. But the first thing I want to know, I want to know if I've got brakes. I want to know if I say whoa and step toward him and do everything right. This horse is going to disengage his hindquarters and stop. Now, there's two reasons for that. One, Australia might be an island, but I really don't want to run all the way to the south coast. So I'd like to know he's going to stop. And two, this is the start of, this is part of your one rein stops and your safety stuff that you're going to work on under saddle. So, all my horses are tra trained to voice. We have a bit of a joke at our house. My mum's horse, you'll see me ride later. Um, I can be riding one of my horses and she can be riding next to me. He's, I trained him, he was one of my old competition horses. I can control that horse when she's riding him off my voice, much to her disgust. So, I'm consistent in my voice cues. So if I say, whoa, 
That was awful. That wasn't good enough, okay? He can do better than that. Woo. That was a little better. Reward the slightest try. That was better than the first go, so now we can actually stand there for a minute. Don't be in a rush. Never be in a rush. Um, act like you've got all day. You know, if I was at home ground working this horse and he was a little bit chargy and a bit silly or he wasn't listening and he'd done something like that, I might just stand here and look at the ground. I don't live in mobile range anymore, but I t tell all of you who do, send a text, check your phone, chill out for a minute. Stop thinking about driving this horse forward. Reward him by letting him do nothing. Just a note on that. In your world, in your horse's world, okay, in your horse's world, oh, sorry, big fella. This, 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 he's like, what are you doing to me? All of this is not a reward. That is, horses don't pat each other in the paddock. That makes us feel good, okay? I had a horse down at Wagga Vet Clinic recently and I was watching the vet students I was sitting a little way away and I'm watching him, this horse, it wasn't this one, it was another one. I know. And um, they got, they're doing this to him. And they're going, oh, he's so beautiful. Oh, this horse's head was up here and his ears were like flipped back and he was just like, get out of my face, get out of my face. And they're going, and I mean, oh, he thinks he's pretty beautiful too. They were going, oh, he's so beautiful. And look at this horse, he's like, don't do this. I do pat my horses, okay? Please, don't think I just beat on them, okay? But th they were doing, and he's leaving this place going, will you get, there you go, will you get out of my face, okay? Um, you know, watch your horse's body language. Your horse tells you a lot by what's going on and what he's doing. That horse just told me to go away. So, you know, don't think you have to be patting your horses to give them a reward, okay? I can guarantee you he would rather stand there like that than me get over there and get in his face. See the nostrils move? There was my deep breath. There was a release. When you're looking for releases, it's really important. And as your horsemanship improves, this will improve. Humans are very visual. We're, we're, very, we're very much about what we see. When you're working with horses, there's my lick and my chew. When you're working with horses, you need to use all your senses. So I can often tell if a horse lowers its head just by what happens to the rope. If I'm looking at you, and often when I'm at clinics and I'm teaching and I've got someone else's horse, I need to be sort of unintentionally observing what that horse is doing. I can feel if they lower their head by the rope. I listen a bit hard here, there's a lot going on, but I can hear when they lick and chew. I can hear when they take a breath. I can feel that rope move as he stepped toward me, okay? Those sorts of things are, are little tiny fine things that will improve your horsemanship a lot. So, back to our lunging. We've got him very nice, well, we've got him disengaging his hindquarters. That's the first stage that I use. The second stage that I used uh, was this to you, get him to move his shoulders. Now that was anything but graceful, but that's okay. Like I said before, we all make mistakes. He's a little overreactive today. I can tell you if I was gonna be riding this horse right now, I wouldn't get on his back while he was doing this, okay? I can tell you exactly what would happen if I got on this horse's back while he was behaving like this. Because right now, he's got a bit of his flight response going on. You can look at his face and look at his head and neck. You can see he's not happy about this. And that's just not what we're looking for. So, I would not be stepping on his back until he started to show me some things we're seeing now. That head just lowered, he took a deep breath, he thought about, he just moved his lips a little bit. He's starting to use the thinking part of his brain and not the reactive part of his brain. He's not thinking I'm a lion or a tiger gonna eat him alive. He's starting to go, oh yeah, it's just Michelle on the end of the stick again. Now, again, so here's is my little safety check. I can get a horse out and I have the bridle on ready to ride and I can send this horse on a few circles like this and I can go, uh-uh, I ain't getting on that horse yet. Like, that would be really comfortable to sit on, not. So, you know, spend a little time. So here's the key to doing it this way. 
every time I ask his horse to change direction, I'm working him a little harder than he would do. Sorry, mate. I'm working him a little harder than I would do if I just let him go round and round and round the circle. That's hard work. This is a big horse. It takes a fair bit of energy for him to rock back over his hindquarters and move that shoulder away from me. So, and I don't know whether you notice, I'm not puffing much. His nostrils are starting to blow a little bit. You know, if I'm a little bit concerned about one of these horses, and, and in my game, like, I have horses that are, are bred to get around. My horses aren't, aren't paddock ornaments, and so they have a little fire about them sometimes. They, you know, competition horses have to. All horses will have a little fire when the grass is green or they've had a bit much to eat. You know, I'd rather know that if I do some of this and I essentially take a little bit of his oxygen away, he's going to settle down a little bit. You know, he's had two days here. He's nearly been driven mad by people patting him. He, um, he's only young. There's a lot going on. His energy levels are way too high at the moment for me to think about even putting a saddle on him. If I was gonna ride him though, and this is worth no noting, if I was gonna ride this horse, I would be doing this, all of this, with the saddle. I would, be, I would be making sure that I had a saddle on him while I did it. And there's a reason for that. Every time this horse changes direction, that saddle's gonna shift on his back. You think about it. How many times have you gone to get on a horse and when you put your foot in a stirrup and that saddle has shifted, that horse has gone like this. So get rid of the problem before you even put your foot in a stirrup. Make sure that saddle has moved around on their back so that they are ready. Now, interesting, just a little note. Note, I stopped, they talked to you guys. Look how much calmer he's come back. Suddenly, we're not the fire-breathing dragon. He's still not real happy, but he's not the fire-breathing dragon he was two minutes ago. Sometimes a stopping, sometimes stopping and giving them a moment and giving you a moment is the absolute best thing you can do. You don't always have to keep going. Um, but anyway, guys, I better stop or Louise is going to kick me out of the arena. Um, <laughs> but um, please, I'll be here. If anyone has any questions or, you know, if anything didn't make sense, please come and see me. Um, and, um, yeah, call by and, yeah, thank you so much for coming to watch my groundwork demo.